please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzler K. This is Grizzly True Crime. Welcome to all my moderators, to all my patrons, members, existing subscribers, anyone that's new here, and of course all the locals as well. Welcome to you. Today we'll be discussing the Delphi case again. It is, uh, how many days? 46 days to trial, I think it is. It's in the description box there. I calculated earlier. I'm like, oh my word, 46 days away and the, you know. There's still a lot of a lot of um, back and forth going on, of course, as we know in this case. I've reported on this a lot. We've been following all of these, what some people say is admin updates, but it's way more than ab admin updates, right? Some of it's very concerning. So please like and share. Uh, you could use any of the hashtags that are in the description box. Hashtag Delphi works great on social media as well. And let's look at some of these documents and then the letters that concerned citizens are writing to Judge Gull. I don't know if you saw my community tab a few, I think two days ago, I shared a whole write up there for you as well, where the defense attorneys through David Hennessy are now uh, crowdfunding resources for their experts because the judge, Judge Gull, has denied follow up consultations for them and more funds. So, that is also quite a concern, right? Cherry, is it your birthday? You said, I'm, oh, I'm heading out for a birthday dinner. Okay, well, Cherry, thank you for being here. Uh, if it is your birthday, happy birthday. If it isn't, then happy birthday to the person whose birthday it is. <laughs> okay, uh, Healing Art says, I really have some doubts regarding this trial. Now, if you don't know anything about this case, please check out the description box. There's a case uh, background right up there for you, and there's a playlist, and we've We've really talked about it a lot, so I don't want to waste any time because I know many of you know everything you know about this case, you've been following along, and we just want to like get to the updates, right? So this is pretty much uh, one of the things that's causing the first topic we're going to talk about, where there are several of these, where they say the court has received a request for recording of court proceedings by news media from Corin Brock, WPTA, for the trial May 13th to May 31st, and denies. <laughs> Judge Gull denies. You know, she likes to do that. Unless it's uh, McClellan filing something. Then it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, granted. Is what it seems like from the outside looking in, right? <laughs> it's just like, wow, there's a lot of deny, deny, deny. Even the media request, deny. No cameras in the courtroom. No media coverage. I'm sure it'll be a case again of no live tweeting. No electronics. No laptops, all that. So no transparency, really. Transparency has been denied. And I think this is one of those cases that absolutely needs transparency. It's already so shady <laughs> that the least that the judge could do now is just make sure the trial's transparent so that everybody could see what is being presented there and make sure that Richard Allen has a fair trial, right? <laughs> Lord no damn says, and a very merry unbirthday to the rest of us. Yes, very merry unbirthday to all of you whose birthday isn't today. <laughs> okay, so... There were, as I say, many of these because many media companies have now come forward and, um, you know, filed these motions with the judge to say, hey, can we, uh, can we be there? Can we cover? No. Motion denied. So therefore, we're going to look at this now. No, sorry, let me just move it over for you. It's a bit of a different size. So I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Remember, I'm not a lawyer. So I don't know if this is like normal to put all of these letters out in the public. But good job to the attorneys, not attorneys, sorry. I just want to turn my mic down a bit. I see it's in the red there. Sorry if it sounds like I'm shouting. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's normal to put it out in the public, but good job for these concerned citizens writing to Judge Gull. I do not have Judge Gull's direct email address, but I don't know if they're writing to the court clerk or who, right? Forrest Nelson says, I think Judge Gull is trying to pull a fast one. With this case, even if... To me, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a conviction, like guilty from all jurors. Are 12 people really going to agree that Richard Allen is guilty? It's more likely they're going to agree he's not, in my opinion, based on what we know so far. 
But even if they have more, okay, which they probably will, the state, I don't know, man, 12 people agreeing on this. I think these defense attorneys are presenting um, a really good case so far. Anyway, so let's look at this. Um, they say ex parte communication received from Mary Griffin ordered uh, copied and sent to counsel of record and the clerk of Carroll Circuit Court, March uh, 26th, right? So I have gone ahead and just redacted Mary Griffin's email address. I know it's public record and it's out there, but I don't, know, I don't want to put it out there like that. I don't know why it's out there like that. You know, I don't know if there's people now making threats to these people or what happened. I really hope not. Okay. Then next is, what about a, what, GTC Grizzly to Crime descent on the Delphi Courthouse to bring more light to the shade? <laughs> Bringing more light to the shade. You say something must be done or RA must be freed. I'm shocked by this judge's complete lack of transparency. Well, yeah, locals are very upset. Media's upset. Everybody's upset. Mainstream media is actually reporting on some of these recent events now, which is also great. Meaning the raising of funds for defense experts and uh, not this yet. I haven't seen that on mainstream media, but let's go over it ourselves. So they say... I don't know, this is what Mary wrote, right? To Judge Gall, I don't know how much you would actually care about this email. Probably not at all. But as an onlooker of this case, it's very worrisome. Must I zoom in more? Okay, it's very worrisome, which <laughs> I agree with, okay? Hoosiers have seemingly lost faith in our judicial system and our law enforcement because of the way this case is playing out. It only makes sense that since, since this trial, yeah, it only makes sense that this trial is streamed so that citizens of this state can possibly gain some trust for our law enforcement and judicial system. You need to show the citizens of Indiana that we all still have our rights and that law enforcement and the judicial system are true to our laws and rights. Even people in other countries are commenting on how they believe this case is run. Yes. <laughs> Just a few of us, but yes. Even people from other countries. Indeed, the world is watching. And as I said, the world is watching until the trial starts. Then we're going to have to rely on hearsay. On, you know, uh, people's crib notes, what they saw, what they heard, what they interpreted. Because so far, transparency is denied. Not even audio only. You know, like Lori Vello, uh, Daybell's trial, that was audio only. Nope, nope, no audio, no video, probably no transcripts. <laughs> Can you imagine the size of those transcripts? Oh, my word. So they said, it is the... It is the job that you were elected to do to make sure that Indiana residents that are brought in front of you receive a fair, unbiased, and constitutional process of law. So if you could please consider that your fellow Hoosiers need to be able to watch how the justice system will make sure that possibly biggest, the, it is possibly the biggest, most high-profile case in Indiana, I think so, in Indiana history, isn't some case full of corruption and unconstitutional rulings. It is you that will get the blame for allowing an innocent man to be found guilty or a guilty man walking because his constitutional rights being violated. Make everyone honest. Keep the story straight. Everyone will come out of that courtroom with false or exaggerated information. Show the world that you are the right person for this job and that you care for the rights of everyone of your fellow Hoosiers. Put some faith back into our state to show the people around the world that Indiana isn't just filled with a bunch of corrupt leaders. I know that I am just some nobody, and you probably won't even read this. Well, she obviously did, because it's filed and made public now, right? I hope she did read it. I think it means she did. But then again, she says she didn't read the Frank's memorandum, so... Anyway, this is shorter. Hopefully this was read. Uh, Mallory Beavers, you can... I don't know. Yeah, you could send it to me. Uh, it's grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. So they say, um, and I, I, do you agree with this? Let me know in the comments what you're thinking. I saw in the comments of my community tab as well what you guys are thinking. Okay, so they say, I know I'm just some nobody, and you probably won't even read this. People around the world are watching this case. The public has the right to see this case to the end. Streaming this trial will pre prevent thousands of people coming to Delphi, and they will be thousands. People all over the world wanting to come and watch what happens in this case. Please consider what I have said. Thank you. Okay, so let let me know what you think about me. I, I, listen, Mary, you are not some nobody. We are very proud of you. I know why she said that to Judge Gall, but we are very proud, right? When, when concerned citizens take the time, 
locals as well there to write a letter to Judge Gull, knowing that this could become public record, and it did, then yes. I think that's a very brave move, right? Okay. <laughs> Janet says, does Gull need it in comic form to read? I don't know. I don't know. If it's coming from, if she needs it to say from McClelland, <laughs> maybe then she'll read it. She'll be like, ooh, he sent me something. No, no, no. Okay, so now we have another one from Monica Perkins. Now we've got to resize this one again. Okay. There we go. Maybe I should make myself just a little bit smaller here. <laughs> All right, so Honorable Judge Francis Gull. I am writing to you as a concerned citizen closely following the case of Richard Allen, who has been charged in connection with a high-profile crime that has captivated the attention of not only the local community, but also observers around the world. It is with a heavy heart and a deep sense of civic duty that I express my concerns regarding the transparency and integrity of the legal proceedings in this matter. The case has been marked by significant public interest, and with Richard Allen having spent over 515 days in solitary confinement, with our trial, I mean, just tell me where you've heard that before. We didn't see, I always say the same examples because I'm like, Adam Montgomery, oh my goodness. I mean, he didn't even have to be at his trial. He's going to have to be at his sentencing, but we'll get to that another time. The point is, he didn't spend 515 days in solitary confinement. Look at Koberger. Hmm? Look how he's being treated. It's like suited up and all fancy fancy in the courtroom there. Like, mm, okay, here we are for another hearing. <laughs> this one... 515 days in solitary confinement with our trial, concerns regarding the fairness and timeliness of the legal process have been amplified. The documents and evidence made available to the public have raised serious questions about the integrity and honesty of the law enforcement response to this tragedy. It is crucial to underline that these concerns are not merely personal opinions, but reflections based on the information and documentation released to the public. Given these circumstances, I implore you, as the presiding judge in this case, to consider the paramount importance of transparency in these proceedings. Allowing for the real-time streaming of the trial would serve as a critical step towards ensuring public confidence in the judicial process. In an era where access to information is both a right and expectation, such a measure would significantly contribute to upholding the principles of justice and accountability that are the bedrock of our legal system. Moreover, recent revelations suggesting that Mr. Allen may not have been present at the crime scene at the time of the murders only add to the urgency for a fair and transparent trial. It is imperative that the trial process not only seeks to deliver justice for Abby and Libby, but also ensures that it is the true perpetrators of this heinous crime who are held accountable. In closing, I respectfully request that you, as a steward of justice, make decisions that prioritize the public's interest in a transparent and fair trial for Richard Allen. This is not only essential for upholding the integrity of our legal system, but also for ensuring that justice for Abby and Libby is achieved in the truest sense. Thank you for considering my concerns. I trust in your wisdom and commitment to justice to guide your decisions in this matter. Sincerely, Monica Perkins. Good job. Okay, good job, Monica Perkins and Mary Griffin, right? Okay, so now let's get to another one. Wait, this one? Yes, okay, this is another one. It's <laughs> quite a few letters here which is great. So let me just see what you guys are saying. Um, SSDGM Indy said, can you please share the link to donate to the Defense and Goals email address for letters? I will put that all in the description box. It is on my community tab, not Goals email, but the link to donate is on my community tab right now. If you're looking for it right now, it's there. Okay. After the stream, when I do all the timestamps and stuff, I will put it in. Okay. So thank you for reminding me though, just in case. Uh, Laurie Bell says, in my opinion, all trials should be made available live. Our legal system doesn't treat all equally. That would be great. And worldwide, <laughs> right? At least uh, in the USA, you see a lot more trials than I think anyone else in the world. Okay, on Honorable Francis Gull. I'm writing, asking, this one is uh, three pages. This is already page two, though. What was page one? <laughs> 
Oh, just to confirm, this is from um, ex parte communication received from LGW, ordered, copied, and sent to Council of Record and the Clerk of Carroll Circuit Court. Okay, so uh, let me just quickly see some of your comments here. True Crime Junkie, the OG says transparency is so important. Yes, indeed. Okay, so they say, um, I'm writing, asking you to reconsider your denial of cameras in the courtroom in the Richard Allen trial. I understand that you have been a proponent of cameras in the courtroom and that you were part of a pilot program for such. I want to say to you that I support cameras in the courtroom for all cases and feel it would give citizens a feeling that justice is being fairly served by our judicial system. Quick side note, you know what's interesting is, is that the only time the judge goal allowed cameras in the courtroom was when she fired the defense attorneys. That is so weird when you look at all the other times, no cameras, not for the hearings, nothing. Most in Allen County. And then when Hennessy brought up recently that attorney Hennessy said, why are we always in Allen County? This is a trial for Carroll County. And Judge Gull agreed and said, from now on, everything will be in Carroll County. <laughs> but the jury is going to be selected from Allen County. So isn't that strange <laughs> to have all the hearings there where you don't want potential jurors to hear about all these things, but that's the place where you have all the hearings? What? Anyway, that was the only time that she allowed cameras in the courtroom in this case so far. To, to shame them in front of all these people. Okay, so I would like to share with you what I'm seeing in this case as to why I think cameras are so very important. I'm going to tell you each instance of what I've seen, how it made me feel, and why I hope to get clarity by watching this case in real time. Nice letters, right? My goodness, one. It appears that Richard Allen went voluntarily to help in an investigation after the public was called upon to come forward to help police with any information that may help catch the perpetrators of a horrific crime. It appears that he, like I would have in the past, wanted to help. What I've seen in response is that he was arrested with a PCA, so a probable cause affidavit, that appears to be falsified with no supporting documentation, signed by a judge who appears to be so terrified that he uh, recused himself, they say excused himself from the case, right? This makes me feel all of my 62 years thinking that stepping forward to help the police is a very bad idea. I will now never step forward to help the police. I've told my children and grandchildren not to ever step forward, and if they are ever stopped by police, to not speak to them. Ask for an attorney immediately. Aren't the police supposed to be our friends and protectors? You would think, right? But, uh, I mean, she makes a good point, or they make a good point. It appears that the defense is being prohibited from being able to defend their client in a proper manner, and that their client, had they not come forward with their statement and memorandum, may very well not be alive today. It appears that a man who is by our constitution considered innocent until being proven guilty was being mistreated and outright tortured as if he were a prisoner of war, yet has never shown violence of any kind. Even the Geneva Convention prohibits this kind of treatment of prisoners. As a regular citizen, this is terrifying to see and hear. 3. It appears that law enforcement and the prosecution have destroyed evidence, falsified evidence, and obstructed justice by losing unbelievable amounts of interviews and other evidence needed for a fair trial. They have forgotten who and when they interviewed people, even going so far as to have lost the name of a professor who had pertinent information regarding third-person guilt. Fingerprints appear to have been lost. A bullet has magically appeared after a crime scene was thoroughly combed over by trained CSI. How does this happen? A citizen finds it? There's no chain of custody? How does this happen? How do we trust law enforcement and the prosecution? How horrific to have come forward to help and be sitting in prison, treated worse than a war criminal, yet much of what would prove I am innocent is missing or destroyed. 4. With number 3 above in mind, how is it that the prosecution and law enforcement can continue to try to remove the defense when they themselves have what appears to have been committing perjury, and obstruction of justice. Why is this? How can making an easy email mistake and having someone you trusted and consulted with in the past totally betray you compare with outright, uh, betray you compare with outright falsifying other people's testimony on a PCA and with intentionally hiding the name of a man who has education in a subject that provides other more likely persons of interest? How can it be okay for this many interviews and evidence to be lost? 70 days worth. Remember that? It was over a 70-day period. 
and the state uh, prosecutor still thinks it's really no big deal. It's not relevant to the case. Well, how do you know? Those are very important interviews from February 17th already. Wow. Okay. So they say, how can it be okay for, for this many interviews and evidence to be lost with no repercussions for the people who were negligent? That's a very good question. Is this intentional? From my eyes, as a citizen, sure looks that way. It appears that the parity that is supposed to exist in our justice system between those who have and those who have not the ability to pay for the defense services is not being upheld in this case. I'm not a rich person. It appears to me that were I arrested, I would not be able to expect a fair trial by having my defense paid in a timely fashion, nor my defense to receive funding to provide expert witnesses on my behalf. Is our system only for those with great wealth to have a fair trial? How many other citizens are sitting in prison right now because they were denied what is supposed to be their right to a fair and equal representation? I find a whole new respect for those that defend the accused in court. Ah, me too. <laughs> they are making sure anyone accused is found guilty and incarcerated by facts and not fiction. I'm hoping you will rectify this by approving payment to Richard Allen's defense and that you will approve payment for expert witnesses so that there truly is parity in his defense. A proper defense should not have to be paid for by fundraising since we already have this right. Okay. Oh my. Macy says, uh, I've heard law tubers say the judges typically do not read letters like this. They are screened by office managers. Maybe Gold will hear about, well, <laughs> maybe she'll receive a whole pile of letters going forward. The more people hear about this, she's going to have to read it at some point. That'll be sad if she doesn't read any of this. Come on, man. Anyway, so uh, in closing, I will share a bit about myself with you and something I experience in my teeny tiny business. I have a business in which I care for people's beloved family pets. In that business, I have cameras throughout that business so that pet parents can check on their pet 24-7. I have other cameras throughout the business showing that there is someone there doing what those pet parents entrusted us to do. I have seen other businesses such as mine refuse to use cameras because they don't want pet parents watching them. My answer to that is, if you are doing your job, if you're doing nothing wrong, why would you not give peace of mind to your clients? Your Honor, I'm asking you the same. Why would you not give the citizens of this country the peace of mind to see that our system, paid for by, by our tax dollars, is doing its job and that it can be trusted? I hope that you will reconsider your approach to the cameras as well as making sure this is actually a fair trial. I want to have peace of mind that my country's justice system actually works to protect its people. At this point, I feel nothing but fear and sadness with what appears to be going on. Will I be next? Will one of my children be next? It's absolutely horrifying. Thank you for reading this email. I hope it provokes thought and that we will end up being able to see real justice in the end. Have a wonderful day. LGW, a loyal citizen of the United States of America. Please pardon my not, uh, not signing my full name. I'm scared of the repercussions of doing so. If you need it, I can provide it confidentially. Okay, so we've got those. And then here, um, in other news, and we're going to look at the uh, David Hennessy's letter next as well. There's three documents still. This is um, State of Indiana versus Richard Allen, limited appearance for defendant. They're adding another lawyer to the team. The undersigned attorney listed on this form now appears in, limit, in a limited capacity in this case for the defendant, Richard Allen. This filing is intended as a limited appearance with the understanding that counsel will be assisting the client, Richard Allen, and attorneys Andrew Baldwin and Bradley Rosie with matters related to the service of process and future depositions of Federal Bureau of Investigation agents associated with investigation and prosecution of Richard M. Allen. Counsel further anticipates assisting Defendant Allen and his legal team with digital forensic issues surrounding the investigation and prosecution of Defendant Allen, including but not limited to conducting discovery, depositions, and courtroom examinations regarding the same. So. This lady, Jennifer Auger, Auger, has been added. This is another one where Judge Gall is just like, deny. Just deny. <laughs> um, the court, having taken the defendant's amended motion to compel and request for sanctions under advisement, and having reviewed the state's response filed March 23rd of 2024, now denies the defendant's amended motion to compel and request for sanctions without hearing. Okay, so now, uh, David Hennessy who is an attorney representing, working with Bradley Rosie and Andrew Baldwin, who was at that last hearing, big guns. 
<laughs> it was like they they brought in the big guns. Okay, Hennessy has now created a crowdfunding link where people can donate to help them pay for uh, defense experts because Judge Goal is denying more funds for their experts. So they've had consultations with some of the experts, but they need follow-up con consultations, and Judge Gold denied that, which includes a confession expert that was denied, and I think that would be good, <laughs> you know, to have as well, you know, at the trial. It should be, it would only be fair. So David Hennessy said, to whom it may concern the prosecution of Richard Allen. Okay, wait, let's just click on it. Oh, it is highlighted like that. The prosecution of Richard Allen has added experts to their witness list. Judge Gold will not approve funds for defense experts. And this attorney, isn't he known as one of the best in the country? When I first heard about him, that's what people were saying. Now, I don't know too much about him and his history of, you know, in his career and everything. But I believe he has a lot of experience, right? So when he's concerned, it uh, feels like that could be a concern as well. Um, so they say the prosecution of Richard Allen, we've read that. This, okay, Judge Gold will not approve funds for defense experts. This creates a one-sided fight and a disadvantaged defense. So I indeed establish crowdfunding for defense experts. No money will go to Rick Allen or the defense attorneys. Only experts to even things up. Appreciate any and all contributions. This is the link to the only a legitimate fundraiser. So that's important to note as well because there will be copycats uh, created to help raise fees for experts. Thank you in advance, David R. Hennessy. So he wrote this letter because at first people were like, is this real? It doesn't look real. Are you sure? Because he whipped it up and he put the link out there and people were like, I don't know, man, I don't know. So, yes. Sherry says, yes, he's old and seasoned. <laughs> okay. Right, so um, Caroline said, these, you mean the letters, right? These are in the record as the case is appealed and as other legal action against Gull is undertaken, this public outcry will be noticed. That is so true as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me quickly go fetch the other stuff that I want to show you quickly, which is over here. Okay, let's boost this quickly. I want to show you this clip, which I was happy to see. Hey, mainstream media is covering this. I don't think they would. And, you know, <laughs> it's good that they are. Okay, so let's do it like this. Make it nice and big for you. And let's have a listen to what they say here. Very unusual development in the Delphi murders case. Attorneys representing Richard Allen are asking the public to help pay for expert witnesses. Our 13 Investigates senior reporter Bob Siegel joined us live in the newsroom to explain why they're taking this pretty drastic action to raise funds. Bob? And they say it's necessary to help ensure a fair trial. That trial set to begin seven weeks from today when a jury will be asked to decide if Richard Allen murdered Abby Williams and Libby German. His public defenders say the judge has regularly denied crucial funding for Allen's defense. So they're now seeking help from the public. In an unusual move, Allen's defense team is now asking for public donations to hire experts for their client's defense. The campaign has already collected more than $10,000 since the fundraiser started just 30 hours ago. The website is being managed by local defense attorney David Hennessy, who's been helping both Allen and his public defenders. This afternoon, Hennessy told 13 News, we're trying to crowdfund to make it a fair fight. All the money will go to experts, it won't go to the attorneys, and it won't go to Richard Allen. They say the crowdfunding is necessary because Allen's defense attorneys are public defenders paid for by Carroll County. And court rules require all defense expenses to first be approved by Special Judge Fran Gall before they are paid by the county. Those rules say the judge must only approve expenses that are necessary and reasonable. According to the defense team, so far Judge Gall has approved much less than requested. In a recent court filing, the defense team claimed the judge approved more than $6,000 for a consultation with a firearms expert and a digital forensic expert. But she denied additional consultations with those experts as unsupported expenses. The defense attorneys claim this court's denial of funding ensures an unfair, inequitable trial. 
And the Indiana Public Defender Council says not providing adequate funding for the defense can create a significant problem. If the defense counsel don't have the tools that they need and they have to go to the judge for permission to use those tools, they effectively can't defend uh, Mr. Allen fairly without having those resources available and for a judge to unilaterally decide these services are not needed, you don't need these funds, it's essentially creating a situation where it might be an unfair trial and a conviction that's questionable. Hennessy says defense attorneys Brad Rosie and Andrew Baldwin have had to resort to paying defense experts out of their own pockets. And he says those personal expenses are getting to be too much, which is why they're now asking members of the public to make private donations. Now, if public defenders believe they are being denied funding improperly, they can always take the case to the Court of Appeals to ask appellate judges to intervene and order more money for the defense. But that kind of appeal takes time. And David Hennessy says they don't want to delay this trial months. In the newsroom, I'm Bob Siegel, 13 Invest. It's Bob Siegel, but not like Francis Siegel. <laughs> So it's a little different. He's a great reporter, um, especially on this case as well. We follow lots of his reports too, right? So isn't it shocking? <laughs> like, I can't believe the state of this case. Very scary. So here, I'm quickly going to read you this, and we are getting to the link and everything. Don't worry. I'm going to show you that as well in a moment. Just stay with me here. Okay. So here, attorneys for Delphi murders defendants say they must rely on online donations to pay for Richard Allen's defense experts. Delphi, Indiana, the man accused of killing two Delphi teenagers in 2017 is now getting public donations to help prepare his defense. Now, to make it clear, okay, the reason I want to share this link is because I would like a fair trial for the defendant. I, I feel like either way, this trial, man, there's a lot of grounds for appeal. I think there's a lot of reasonable doubt. So I don't know how they're going to, how the state thinks that they're going to get a conviction. <laughs> Good luck with that. And if they do, oh, there's so many grounds for appeal, right? So because I see people, you know, accusing those of sharing the link of saying, you're paying, <laughs> you're <laughs> paying for a double homicide, like a child killer to be free. I mean, that is just a very narrow view of things. It's not paying for a, we don't know that he's the killer. He's innocent until proven guilty. He's the suspect and everything else around this case is so sus. It's about him having a fair trial. They need to have defense experts, as we see in many trials. I'm sure many of you have watched trials with me. They need to have defense experts there at once. And it's not like they're asking for, I don't know, I don't know who to name. It's not, say, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> they're asking for a confession expert, for a firearms expert, for things that matter in this case, like key expert witnesses. And, I mean, even the funds they're raising now, it's... $25,000 is their goal. <laughs> their goal. I mustn't say goal. <laughs> it's their goal. Um, which isn't a lot considering the trials that we've recently watched. Remember the Daniel Howard trial? Do you remember that one expert that made like $90,000 from his work on the case? $90,000. I was 50 and then another 40 before and all of that. That was hectic. You remember the private investigator made how much? He was, I think he said it was like $12,000 or something. So twenty five dollars for these experts is not that much that they're asking for right? You know, I wonder if, if there's a financial problem there. What's going on in Delphi? Judge Gold, what is happening? Do you not have the funds? Do you have them? What is happening? I'm sure they raised a lot of money over the years, right? So they said, we're trying to crowdfund to make it a fair fight, attorney David Hennessy told 13 News on Tuesday afternoon. The longtime Indianapolis attorney has been helping Delphi defendant Richard Allen and providing legal counsel for Allen's public defenders. Allen is charged with the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German near the Delphi Monon High Bridge. And his trial is scheduled to begin in May. On May 13th is when it's jury selection. It's a three-week trial because it's until May 31st, so three calendar weeks, including jury selection, which is very short. It's very short. Yeah, Stefan says, I remember the 90K expert. <laughs> yeah, I think we all remember that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, and that wasn't even all that relevant to the case. 90K. So... Come on, man. Can't they just let them have their experts? Hennessy, uh, Hennessy said he's increasingly concerned, and that concerns me that he's concerned because he has so much experience, right? He's increasingly concerned that Allen will not receive a fair trial, prompting him to launch an online fundraising campaign Monday afternoon to fight for his freedom and for justice for both victims of this heinous crime. In the first 24 hours, the fundraising campaign raised more than $10,000 of the $25,000 goal. 
All the money will go to the experts. It won't go to the attorneys and it won't go to Rick Allen, he said. The crowdfunding effort comes after Richard Allen's attorneys filed court documents claiming that special judge Francis Gohl has been denying their funding request. And some people will say, oh, how do you know that? They might just be saying it. Well, they also stated in court documents that they weren't being paid. Do you remember how the defense attorneys had to beg Judge Gohl to pay them? For months they were begging? I mean, Bradley Rosie eventually said, I have a family to feed. Like, what are you doing? And then people will say, but these attorneys offered to work pro bono, so why are they asking for help now? They're asking because they're public defenders for funds for their expert witnesses, <laughs> which we see in every trial, right? Oh my goodness. Uh, Cake says the biggest amount for an expert I've seen was like $138,000 for a doctor. And I think this, this is a collective fund maybe for, it sounds like two or three experts. I don't know. Okay, so let's quickly go here. This one. Oh, no, that's not the one. Here it is. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is it. The link. I'll put it in the chat here. Um, link. Okay. Wait. There we go. And I'm going to put it in the description box afterwards. It's also on my community tab, as I said. So this is the site payit2.com. Uh, experts for Richard Allen. Okay. So let's just quickly read this. I just want to make it bigger so you could see the actual goal and everything. Okay. So there it is. So they, they're almost there at their goal. I kind of hope they exceed the goal. <laughs> if I, I think they might need more, not. So they said at David R. Hennessy Law Office, okay, this is the official expert expense fund for Richard Allen. Richard Allen was once employed as a licensed pharmacy technician at the, at the CVS in Delphi, Indiana. On October 31st, 2022, Mr. Allen was arrested for a crime that he maintains he did not commit. Mr. Allen has been accused of committing Abby and Libby's murders, but is investing everything he has, but is investing everything he has to fight for his freedom and for justice for both victims of this heinous crime. He's presumed innocent or proven guilty through a court of law and has an absolute right to a fair trial, which is currently being violated. Funds are being raised to pay expenses related to expert fees and costs. Donations are not tax deductible. So you can, with that link, you can donate. If you are from abroad, meaning not in the USA, sometimes it depends from where, I believe some countries you can't do this, some you can. I've had to pay for uh, FOIA files and documents and things in the USA. And then they ask for that zip code because when you uh, donate, then it wants your zip code, okay? So if you're in America, of course you have the zip code. It doesn't yet um, allow for international zip codes, but if you type in five zeros, then it could, okay? Uh, let me just quickly see if they changed anything. I just want to see, because I put out a, oh, okay, okay. I put out a um, a message, okay, on X. I, I, I tweeted, <laughs> I posted on X, and I tagged Defense Diaries and Vinica Law, Cora Vinica, okay? And then I was saying that I highlighted this problem of this zip code. And I asked if they can maybe ask uh, Mr. Hennessy to remove the zip code requirement because there are people from overseas who want to make payments. And it looks like they did. Enter your donation, your name, last name, email, leave a message. Yes, he did it. Okay. <laughs> he actually did it. Nice. Well, that's nice to see. I hope that helps people because I was getting a lot of emails from uh, Grizzlies after putting this on my community tab and they're like, I don't know, man, I'm from overseas. We can't make payment. Stefan says, I like your five zeros work around, G. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yes. A friend in the USA helped me with that one. Just like, how do I do it? <laughs> so five zeros, if you're ever stuck, okay, tends to work. But here, now you don't have to anymore. And you can also tick this box here if you want to uh, remain anonymous, if you feel scared or something. So there you go. All right, so that's what we have there. What else do I have to show you here? What is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Curious Luke on X made this website, which you might have heard of him before from the Danilo Cavalcante case because he had a lot of stats and things there for us. Let me just see if I can, fi if I can find him. Just wait one second. Yeah, this one. Okay. Luke Nicholas at... Curious Luke 93. I'll put his link in the description box as well. Um, he said, justice in Delphi affects you too. DelphiJustice.com. Uh, not that. These are all the other judges. I'll show you that in a moment. 
So he's made this website that I'm going to link in the description box as well. It says justice in Delphi affects you too, denial of funding for critical evidence examination. And you just, you can click like this and it just takes you to the next point. Okay. And so I'm going to link this so that you can read through this yourself. You've got homework. <laughs> you know, I love to give homework over here. You've got homework. Actually, there's more homework I have for you. There's two. <laughs> One. Okay. Read, read this. <laughs> Let's go back to the top. Okay. I'm going to put it in chat for now quickly, and then I'll put it in the description box afterwards. Okay. That's that website, right? Then the second bit of homework, if you go to wherever you listen to your podcast, I usually listen on Spotify, not at all sponsored. I'm just saying where well, I listen to it. Okay. Uh, so chapter five signatures of the down the hill podcast. I still find that, <laughs> that episode so interesting when I listen to it. I'm like, huh, you know? We talk about like three signatures and all kinds of things and lots of evidence. I don't know. It's just with the former prosecutor, Robert Ives. Also, in other news, the state has added an attorney as well. So it's Nicholas McClelland, James Luttrell, and Stacey Diener. When I heard Diener, I'm like, is she related to Benjamin Diener? I don't have an answer for that yet. I don't know. I don't think so. But imagine, <laughs> just imagine it. Would we be surprised? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. Okay. Uh, so... Homework number one <laughs> is to check out this website and read it for yourself. Homework <laughs> number two, okay, is just re-listen to this, especially if you've never heard it. This Down the Hill podcast, very good, very informative. I've listened to it all before, and I just went back to that. Chapter five, signatures, very interesting. And the last bit, what was that? No, that was only those two, only those two. I just wanted to show you, you know, don't you sometimes feel like if things become chaotic and a mess, then you just think of what it would be like in like a parallel life right? Like, what could it have been like? Just imagine if it was any of these other judges, and I'm sorry, but also not sorry really to say that based on everything we've seen, but just look at all these judges. Ellen Superior Court, okay? Honorable David J. Avery. I don't know. We don't know if they would have done a better job, but it wouldn't be hard to <laughs> at this point. But just look at all these, all the potential <laughs> judges that could have been picked, huh? Yeah, and Melissa says, that's what I was wondering. Stacey Diener, small town. Yes. So yeah, I was just looking through this and I'm like, I was actually looking for Judge Gold's email address and I'm like, oh, I just have to find out if that email address, thank you uh, to the person who sent it to me. Is it public? Is it public record? Is it public knowledge? Because I don't want to put her email address out there and get sued or something <laughs> by the judge. You put my email address out there. I don't know, man. <laughs> Many people have actually sent it to me, so it should be there. I will say it's her name. Okay, at ellensuperiorcourt.us, if you want to write some letters. <laughs> okay, here's Honorable Frances C. Gall, and she's the Chief Judge and Criminal Division Administrative Judge. Chief. And I know people said, no, no, she was just promoted to an admin position. But to be promoted in this circumstance... Wow. <laughs> True Crime Junkie, the OG. Podcasts are audio only. Not like this. The person who's doing the podcast just talks. <laughs> that is so true. This is not a podcast. Okay, so just, I don't know. I just looked at all these judges and I'm like, man, could have been so cool with anyone else. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Danielle says, we need Judge Toll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Ah, Professional Auntie says, I found it on Google. Okay, then I'm going to, you found it on Google? Okay, without like running background checks or anything. Okay, it's all over public records. Okay, then I will put that email address in the description box because I know Grizzlies like to write letters, right? Um, MBN says, did you see the motion filed by WTHR? I don't know. Let me just see. That was, they were also denied, right? WTHR denied motion for recording in court. I don't know if I saw that. If you have it, you could send it to me. That would be great. There's so many documents. There's even ones I didn't show you today, you guys. <laughs> I was going through a pile of documents as usual. Delphi is like that. You're just like, whoa, there's a lot here. Let's just pick out, let's focus on something here that we can talk about today because there's a lot. Uh, Ellen Victoria Olson, no, said rare occasion. Did all the homework already? <laughs> you already did your homework. Okay, A plus for you. Okay, you said thanks to everyone who cares. <laughs> I do care. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing your homework already. That is brilliant. So let me know. I can't wait to read your comments. Uh, let me know what you think, okay, about what's going on, you know, about the defense experts not being paid for, 
by Judge Gold. She's denying funds, apparently, for them. Now there's this fundraiser, crowdsourcing. Oh my goodness, crowdfunding, what? Uh, Neville's true crime, so nice to see you said, I'd take anyone there but Gold. Me too, me too. <laughs> Even me, I would. Let me just quickly see if I've got a picture here for you that I made actually for MB Inc. earlier. Um, yeah, this one. Let's see if we can show you this. <laughs> MB Inc. Matt shared on X that Judge Gull has a new watermark. Wait, which one is it now? Is it this one that I did? And it's just denied. So I made this one. Seagull, denied. <laughs> Her favorite watermark for documents. Just deny it. What, what, what is it? No, deny it. <laughs> if it's from the media, if it's from the defense, if it's a letter, if it's in it, deny it. Okay. If it's from the prosecutor. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> so, okay. I just want to see. Um, so, WTHR and many other media companies also filed. There were a whole list of them that filed motions, requests to be able to cover this trial, and they were denied. So, that just sucks, honestly. You know, because I think they also thought, let's just band together and submit this request, and maybe she'll say, no, she said no, denied. Okay. Trevor says, I would recommend focusing on cameras or streaming, not her past actions. Well, we can't ignore the past actions, but we do want cameras in the courtroom. All of it. We want a fair trial. We can't ignore the past actions. No way. <laughs> we want a fair trial. We want it to be transparent, you know? Okay. Oh, thank you so much, MB Inc. Really appreciate it. I think it would be similar to what I... Oh, there you go. What I showed, right? Oh, there was a... Today's date is the 28th. Yeah. So they say court receives... It's just um, a screenshot I've got there. Court receives request for recording of court proceedings by news media... Um, from WTHR and Denise. <laughs> Denise, okay, we're done. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching this update. I will keep you posted. There is only, it's now 46 days until the trial starts. 46 days. That is not long. As I said, when the Chad Daybell trial is done, because that's eight to 10 weeks. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to just give you some summaries there. I don't know if we're going to covering that eight to 10 weeks of looking at a Zoom screen. <laughs> But anyway, once his trial's done, this trial will already be done as well, actually, just about. Yes, once his trial done, this trial will be done. Can you believe that? 46 days away, May 13th, with jury selection. And how long will jury selection be? Like, how are they going to find jurors? I hope they will. I'm sure they will, but damn. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mods. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to reading all your comments. Thank you, everyone who sent emails. In fact, I did forget one thing, one thing. Hold on, hold on. Where's that one? There we go. There was an attorney who emailed me earlier and said, I have been a great admirer of your attention to detail and thoroughness for a very long time. That is so sweet. Then she said, an extremely important legal concept which outraged citizens may draw attention uh, to in their letters to or complaints regarding Judge Gull is this. The failure of the judge to exercise any discretion at all constitutes in itself an abuse of discretion, which might be grounds for removal. It could also constitute an ethical violation under whatever code of conduct to which she's subject. Her power as a judge is not unfettered, though her actions clearly indicate that she's operating under misapprehension that the opposite is true. So thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate that email as well. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> Stefan, I was like, what? You're like, two weeks for jury selection, one witness for the prosecution. <laughs> McClelland himself. <laughs> Toe Blizzenby, Doug Carter. Oh no, it's not funny. This is not fun at all or funny. It's just like, can you believe <laughs> the state of this case? Like anything you think that can't go wrong still, that it can't get worse. Oh no, it can. It really can. So thank you so much, uh, everyone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Travis has a second part. That was part two of a part two part post. I'm not allowed to send her an email if you want, what? Wait, I'm not allowed to send her an email. If you want it to be read and get to cameras, oh, good point. If you guys are gonna write letters to Judge Gall, focus on cameras in the courtroom, the need for transparency, okay? I'm gonna put her email address, the link to the fundraiser, the link to the website that Luke made, all of that in the description box right now, okay? As I say goodbye, I'm gonna play the outro, I'm gonna be busy with that. Okay, bye everyone.